Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a form based application using SharePoint list as a data source. So before I start, I'll show you I have created two lists over here. The first list is customer details. And if you see, I have some common columns over here like customer names, email, phone, address, city, state. And the second list, it is a child list where customer name is the lookup column, which is which is referenced from the parent list over here called customer detail. And then there is order date, quantity, unit price, amount and item description. So with that, I'm going to switch over here to my build apps and click on add an app. Now I'm going to select form based application though the SharePoint data source uh, for eForm is also uh, supported on the process based application as well. I'm, to go, I'm going to give it a name. Click next. Now at this time what you see is there's a new data source available. So in past uh, some of the blog videos you uh, saw me creating the same application with agile point data entity, SQL server database table, Salesforce entities. This time I'm going to select SharePoint as a data source. I'm going to call, give it a name. Select my connection to SharePoint. Select my SharePoint site. It's on the root site over here. And I'm going to specify what is my primary list. So I'm going to say, it is customer details. So if you note over here, there's a there's one line written over here. This application is going to be accessible only through SharePoint because I selected SharePoint as a data source. And the primary intention over here is that it should replace the list form, which is provided out of the box for the SharePoint list with our own list form. So if I go over here before creating the application, go to customer detail and click new item. At this time, you see the standard SharePoint list form, which you'll see how it changes when I create the application. So I'm going to go ahead and say, select all fields. It shows me all the fields over here. I can, for data privacy reasons, decide not to show all the fields on this form or not to make all the fields available on this form. And I can create a master detail kind of a form as well, which otherwise is not available within SharePoint list. So I can select that there is a child list called order detail and click finish. So it generates uh, the app for me. Almost 80% of the app is automatically generated, which you will see. So all the default views are generated for me. All I have to do is design my new customer detail form. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It redirects me to the form designer. I'm going to go with the default style. But one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a two column layout. I'm going to add a heading. We'll call it customer details. And I'm going to start dragging and dropping some of the nodes from my SharePoint data source. So the first one I want is I rename my title column to customer name in the list. So I'm going to drag and drop that. Now it automatically detects what is the best uh, control type for it. However, I'm not limited to that. So if I go back to my customer list, if you see my customer name, email and phone are all single line of text. That is because SharePoint at this point of time does not have a specified uh, data control type for phone or an email. However, with agile point forms, you can give that kind of rich uh, user experience uh, to an otherwise single line of text, right? So if I know that this is going to be an email, I can always go over here, drag and drop an email field. So it comes with all the inbuilt validations and I can always say that, okay, data bind it to the email field in my data source. Same way I can do it for the phone. 
I can define my phone format. I can say dialed in US is the phone format. So as you can see, it does all the regex check for me. And it is now data bound as well. So basically what I'm trying to show over here is that you can create nicer looking forms, which was otherwise not possible on a standard SharePoint list form. It would have not done all these validations for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag and drop an address field. This is of type text area. I'll span it across two columns just to give it a little bit more space. City and state. So I'm going to leave those as text boxes. I could have created that as a drop down as well. Next, I'm going to just quickly drag and drop another heading. I'll call it order details. And I'm going to scroll down to my child list. So if you see there is a nested child list available over here and I'm going to drag and drop that on my form. It asked me because it is a repeating control. What kind of a repeating control do I want to use? Is it a data grid? I'm going to select subform so that I can design it as per my needs instead of showing it in just a grid based format. I'm going to span it across multiple columns. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to say use a column based layout. It is already marked as repeatable. And then I'm going to design my subform. I'm going to say that there are five columns which are going to be available. If I click on the data source, here are the fields available under my child uh, table. I'm going to say first one is called item description. Second one is order date, quantity, and it is automatically deciding what is the best control to use for this unit price. So as you can see, unit price is a currency, so it added that and amount. Now I can do auto calculation of the amount. I'm going to leave that for now. So this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and say save and check in. Next, I'm going to click on update custom detail form. This is going to be used for both edit as well as display form. So that was my new form. And now I'm going to design my edit and update form. Now I don't have to do all that. As I said, 80% of the app is auto generated for me. I can just say the, the three views were automatically generated and I can even generate this one. So I'm going to say yes, copy the layout from the new form. So it's all automatically generated for me. I can of course go into bulk edit and mark all of these as read only or something of that sort based on my rules. I'm going to leave it as default for now. I'm going to go ahead and save and check in. Click publish. I'm going to check in all the files. And click publish over here. Now, once this is done, remember I said that this application can be consumed from within SharePoint only. So I'm going to switch back to my SharePoint list over here. Going to go to my list, customer detail. Go to agile point workflow. And I can do it from uh, the modern experience as well. So let me switch to that. I'm going to go ahead and click Agile Point Workflow. Now it shows me two buttons instead of one. Previously you used to see that I can only associate a workflow with a list. Now I have a new option called List Form Association. Once I select that, it asks me to select a content type if I have multiple of them. And then I can select the available form based application and it automatically figures out what is the new form, update form and the read only form. So it is going to override the default SharePoint's new edit and display form for me. I'm going to go ahead and click save. So it is now published successfully. I, at any point of time, I could have reset it so that it goes back to the regular SharePoint form. But I'm going to go ahead and click, click close over here. Now I can just go ahead and click new.
so it takes me uh, to the new form so now you can see that instead of the regular SharePoint form it opened my form over here I'm going to type some details I'm going to type something in item description pick a date so remember it has picked up all the correct control types for me automatically and since I didn't do auto calculate I am just entering it you can just duplicate it so that I enter two records so as you can see it is a master detail form this is one list and this is the child list over here this is the parent list right so I'm going to go ahead and click submit And the record is automatically inserted into my SharePoint list. So you, here you see, this is the data I entered previously. And if I go to the child list, which is order details, I have two orders inserted. And as you can see, here is the reference column, right? This is the one from coming from the parent list. And all the orders have been inserted. Now, one more thing, as I said, this can be accessed from within SharePoint. So yes, I can access it as a list form from my, my list. But if I go to the web part, which is put on the SharePoint homepage or any other page which you have hosted within SharePoint, I can still go to my applications, click on the same app. And because right now I'm not opening it from within the list, it shows me a list view uh, using the one which was generated. So I. I don't have to access it from within the list. I don't have to go to the individual list and access it from there. I can, I can see the, uh, the data over here. I have various views defined. I can define as many views as I want. And I can say, add a new record. And maybe recliner sofa today, maybe $600. And go ahead and click submit. So, as you can see, the form got submitted. And I, I now have two records. The second record got inserted from here. I can always view the record. In a read-only way it is showing up and I can always edit it as well so the advantage of the second approach through the web part is I don't have to navigate to individual lists I can still access the application from one common area but at the same time the same form is accessible from the list as well so either user goes to the web part or through the central area he is accessing the same form please remember that this is accessible from within SharePoint only because I have tied it to a SharePoint data source. Thanks a lot for your time.